Hi, Mr. Wright here, and welcome to this film, which contains my predictions for Edexcel IGCSE Maths Paper 2H. This is the paper which many of you will be sitting on Monday the 3rd of June. So at the time of recording, you've got a fortnight, 14 days, until your paper. So lots of time to get ready. Now, before I start with the predictions, a couple of things. First of all, I have put as much information into this film as I possibly can to help you out. So please watch it to the end to make sure that you get everything from it. Secondly, this film is part of a playlist which is called something like Preparing for Edexcel IGCSE Maths Paper 2H. Onto that playlist, I will add films as I make them throughout the next fortnight. Each film specifically recorded and specifically targeted at one of these topics, which I reckon is going to come up. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to make sure you're notified when I add films to that channel. And if you are already subscribed, we'll look out as I add films. Next, please remember that these are predictions. I'm not absolutely certain what's going to come up in the paper. Indeed, nobody can know until we all see the paper on Monday the 3rd of June. So these are what I think is going to come up. Now, there are 20 topics in all. You'll need to grab a pen so that you can write some things down as I take you through the topics. Which, by the way, as soon as this film goes live, I'm going to start work producing my films, each one targeted at one of these topics. If you'd like me to prioritise a particular topic, then tell me so in the comments and I'll try and bump that topic's film up the list. Right, pen at the ready. Here come my predictions for Edexcel Maths Paper 2H. Okay, here we go. My predictions for Paper 2H. Now, first of all, how did I make these predictions? Well, what I did was I took all the topics which came up on Paper 1H and I looked at that list alongside my analysis of how frequently each topic comes up. And that meant that I was able to look and see which topics either haven't come up this year that one would expect them to come up, or which topics have only come up perhaps once, and you would expect those particular topics to come up more than once across the two papers. So hence my predicted topics for paper 2H. Right, pencil or pen at the ready. So what topics do I think will come up? Here we go. Right, first of all, number-based topics. And of course, these topics are in no particular order. Okay, I'll just list off the topics one by one. So first of all, percentages. Now, percentages often come up in several different ways across the two papers. We've already had questions on reverse percentage changes and on percentage changes, but no questions yet on compounding. So I mean questions when you have to find the amount in a savings car in the savings account after compound interest, perhaps several years of compound interest. I mean depreciation, because that's again a compounded change. Okay. Quite simple questions when you find the amount after several repeated changes. And then of course there are questions where you have to find what the interest rate was that's being compounded year after year. Okay, and so questions can be quite simple or much more difficult. Right, percentage profit is another area of percentages which generally comes up once across the two papers, hasn't come up yet. Here's an example of a percentage profit question, but of course you'll need to get your head around percentage loss as well. Right, next topic which I reckon will come up is bounds, i.e when you have to, here's a straightforward example, where you have to find the lower bound and or the upper bound of a value that's given to a certain degree of accuracy. Now, of course, questions can be quite simple. They can be a little more complex where you've got a formula like that one and you have to decide whether to use the upper or the lower bound for A and for C and for Y to give you the upper bound of P in this case. Questions, the formulas can be slightly more complicated when a division is introduced. Here you're dividing by t, so you have to think carefully about which bounds, which bounds you're going to use for each of the variables. Okay, sometimes the formula that you need 
is not given to you and you have to figure it out given the context of the question. Topic three, operations with mixed numbers. Now, these are relatively straightforward. Generally, the question seems to be a show that a calculation has a particular solution. And what you have to do in these cases, of course, is to ignore the solution they give you, work through the question, work through the left-hand side, showing you're working clearly, and hope that you get the answer on the right-hand side. So those are operations with mixed numbers. Topic four, ratio hasn't come up yet. Sometimes ratio questions are relatively straightforward, like the first one here about the number of goals scored. Sometimes ratio questions require you to work with two percentages. One way to do that is to combine those two. And sometimes, percentages, sometimes ratio questions can be more complicated still. Right, that's number. Now shape and space. Now trigonometry. Now, we've had questions using the sine rule and the cosine rule. We haven't had any questions using the area formula for a non-right angle triangle. But more importantly, we have not had any trigonometry in right angle triangles in two dimensions. So, you might be asked to find a side or to find an angle using Sokotoa. You might find that the question given is a more complex two-dimensional problem like this one where you have to find something to help you find something else you might find the 2 2d trig is hidden in questions involving the angles of depression or elevation like they are in this question involving the cliff but i would expect 2d trig in right angle triangles to appear i would also expect a question involving trigonometry in three dimensions to appear as well. The one at the top here is relatively straightforward because it's a straightforward cuboid and in that question you're asked to find the angle alpha there. But of course the solids you can be presented with and the questions that you're asked can be more complex such as this more complex solid here, this prism which has a trapezium as its regular cross-section. So trig in 2D and trig in 3D, but we've already had the cosine rule and the sine rule. We haven't had any circle theorems yet. Here's a relatively straightforward example of a question involving circle theorems. And here's a slightly more complex example. Okay, don't forget, you could be asked about the intersecting chord theorem. And also look out the chords might intersect at a point outside of the circle. Don't worry, I'll put a playlist about each of these topics. Sorry, I'll put a film covering each of these topics in my Getting Ready for Paper 2H playlist, and I'll certainly be sure to include some intersecting chord theorem examples in the circles film. Coordinate geometry. Now, this is a very broad topic. The sort of things you need to know how to do before you can start are finding gradients and writing the equations of lines if you have the gradient and you have a point on the line. And then, having established that bit of prior knowledge, the examiners can ask you lots of questions involving midpoints or involving 2D shapes. Here are questions involving trapeziums and kites. Okay, and here's another question. Um, involving midpoints and gradients. Okay, and also they could ask you to find equations of perpendicular bisectors and have to use those equations to answer more complex problems, such as this one at the bottom, where you have to find the area of a triangle. Again, I will be sure to put as comprehensive a play as comprehensive a film as I can muster in the Getting Ready for Paper 2H playlist on this. Right, moving on. Similarity. Now, sometimes questions are relatively straightforward. Here are two similar two-dimensional shapes, and you have to find missing lengths. And sometimes the questions involve similar solids like these two, and you need to find the scale factors between the two different lengths, or the scale factors between two different areas, or the scale factors between the volumes. Again, I will sort you out with a film in the playlist. Vectors is a huge omission from paper one. 
And I would be very, very surprised if it didn't come up in paper two. Again, the questions can be simple, like these first two here, adding vectors or finding the magnitude of a vector. They can get slightly more complex. You can, for instance, use vectors to analyze parallel lines, that sort of thing. And then they can become slightly more complex too. And then here is the sort of question which can appear at the end of a paper, which involves, well, often I solve these using mu's and lambdas, and that involves some more complex vector theories, which, of course, I will include in the vector film on the red playlist. Right, moving on. Data now. We haven't had any cumulative frequency. We haven't had any medians or interquartile ranges. Now, questions sometimes take the form of you having to draw a cumulative frequency graph and then use the graph to find a median or an interquartile range. And sometimes they take the form of you being given a cumulative frequency graph and being asked to read data off there, for instance, find the median, or here you are in part B, estimating the number of students who gained 58 marks or less. Okay, find the interquartile range. And then you might also be asked to compare distributions as well. So we haven't seen any of that yet. Right, moving on. Here we are. Mean, median, mode, and range problems. So there are lots of different ways in which the examiners can test your knowledge of mean, median, mode, and range. They can ask questions which need you to find a missing piece of data, such as this top question here. Very often we see mean problems which involve you having to find the total of all the data values. Um, Sometimes you're asked, well, lots of students call this the reverse mean, where you're given the mean and you're asked to find a missing value. In this case, the frequency of the missing frequency there. Where's it gone? Here we are. Sorry. There we go. In this case, the missing frequency in that frequency table. Right. Analyzing grouped data. We haven't seen that yet. This is a very common sort of question where you're given some information. In this case, it's about the weights of 40 babies. You're asked to find the modal class and to work out an estimate for the mean weight of the 40 babies. I use MidMad to do that. And sometimes then you can be asked for some further analysis. In this case, you're asked to find the probability that a randomly chosen baby has a weight of more than five kilograms. Let's move on to algebra. Right. Now, we've seen some expanding brackets, but we haven't seen any expanding three brackets or expanding any brackets questions like the bottom two here. So the top one is obviously expanding three brackets. The bottom two questions are slightly different, but I would imagine that this topic will come up in some shape or form. Right. Simultaneous equations. Now, we haven't had any linear simultaneous equations yet, and I'm surprised by that. So I would be expecting a question to come up which involves you solving linear simultaneous equations. And my method would often be to get the x's the same and then subtract. I would also expect a question each year on simultaneous equations where one of the equations is linear and the other one is not. So questions such as these two here. Okay, now my technique here is to use one of the equations to get an expression for x or for y and to substitute that into the other equation. If you look at the top question there, that's a relatively straightforward example, whereas the bottom question is a more complex example. But again, have a look in the playlist. I will put a film in the playlist to help you with these. Okay, topic 15, inequalities. We haven't seen very much on inequalities. Perhaps you'll be asked quite a straightforward question and using a number line like at the top of the screen there. Perhaps you'll be asked to solve an inequality, which of course you do in much the same way as you solve an equation. Or maybe you'll be asked to solve a quadratic inequality, slightly more complex. And again, you might want to reach for the film in the playlist, which I will publish very soon. Right, so that's inequalities. Where are we going next? 
fractional and negative indices. We've had some questions testing our knowledge of indices. I'm not sure we've had any negative indice questions like the top one. We certainly haven't had any fractional indices questions. So that should be on your must be fluent with topic list. Oh, and there's an example there with a fractional indice, which is also negative. Okay, proportion. Here's a very common topic which hasn't come up yet. I would expect a question on two variables which are directly proportional. In this top one here, you'd probably have to find a formula for t in terms of r, and then use that formula to find the value of r given a value of t, or to find a value of t given a value of r. And if you have to tackle a question where two variables are inversely proportional, much the same process. In this question, I imagine you'd have to find a formula for f in terms of r, and then use that formula to find the value of f given a value for r, or to find the value of r given a value of f. But proportion, I would think, is a dead cert. Gosh, I've said that aloud, a dead cert for paper two. Quadratic equations, we've had a little bit, not, not a lot. If I were guessing, I would guess that quadratic equations would come up. And again, this is a guess, but I would guess that the question may involve using the quadratic equation formula. Now, of course, you're given the formula, but you do not want to mess a question like this one up. I've lost it again. So make sure that you practice these questions until you cannot get them wrong. Topic 19. We're on graphs now. I haven't seen any graphical inequalities yet. Questions here where you have to write down the inequalities which define a region. Okay, that's a relatively straightforward one at the top of the page there. And a question here where the equation's still linear but are relatively more complex. So I would be revising um, using y equals mx plus c and other techniques to draw linear graphs and I'd be clear on shading around my lines so that I could write down three inequalities that define a certain region. Okay, topic 20. We're almost there. Working with nonlinear graphs. Now, sometimes you're asked to identify graphs like these four. Okay, sometimes you're asked to plot perhaps cubics or other sorts of graphs and often you use a table of values to do those. Okay, and then often you're, used, you're asked to use graphs to solve equations. In this question, you've given the, the uh, part of the graph of a certain uh, function there, y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 1. And in part A, there's a relatively straightforward equation to solve using the graph and in part b you're required to do some algebraic manipulation in order to solve that equation in part b the one that's shaded in blue so i will put some useful films for you in my preparing for paper 2h playlist of course i will right i think we're almost there so please 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 keep an eye on this playlist because I'll be adding films to it over the next few days. Please comment on this film, especially if you've got a question, if something isn't clear, and also please do let me know which topics you'd like me to prioritise as I am making and compiling the films to help you with each specific topic. And lastly, please share this film. Let's help everybody we know who is taking Edexcel IGCSE Maths to do the best they possibly can on their paper too. Thank you for watching. See you in the next.